welcome to the VNN, the Villains News Network. We are your hosts, Karel and Christelle Momami. Today, top story is about the Green Line extension and how it will affect the neighborhood of Union Square. Rory, Owen, and Anique went to learn more. We went to the Somerville Community Corporation to speak with members of Union United and find out what they thought about the Green Line extensions. So Union United is a coalition uh, of residents and businesses and organizations in Union Square that is fighting to make sure people don't get displaced when the Green Line comes in and Union Square is redeveloped. So we want to make sure that people are educated about what's happening in the community and get to have a voice in the new development that's going to shape the future of Union Square. Uh, so how do you feel about the new Green Line? Well, the Green Line is going to bring transportation um, and bring people in, and it's going to be allow people to, to get jobs outside of Somerville. And so we're trying to tie the development to local jobs so that people will be able to take the, 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 the transportation that's coming in and have use it as an opportunity. Do you think the Green Line will cause more displacement? It will cause. Um, it will bring some good and bring some bad stuff too. Some displacement, so the local people will move because the rent raise and the land raise. So that will make a big bad impact on the local people, businesses, um, renters. A landlord will get rich but <laughs> not us. So, what do you think the major causes of displacement are in Somerville? So, one thing that Afruza just said is the way development usually works now, the landlords and the people who own property are the ones who um, get a lot of benefit. Um, and what we found is that people who rent, whether it's a business or a home, and even low-income homeowners are not benefiting from displacement. And we want to make sure that actually those people who are most vulnerable to displacement get to be at the table to talk to the developers and tell them what they need. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We also want to speak with local businesses to find out their opinion. How can the green light extensions affect your business and your restaurants? I think that that's a good question. I think um, it will affect us by bringing in more customers that don't drive. Um, it'll be easily accessible for them to get here. And um, it will just help the city altogether, I think. I think it's a really good positive thing. Thank you. A part of me is worried that with the green line extension, the rent around here will go up and, uh, you know, this place might turn into a banana republic or a smoothie bar, and I would not like to see that happen. I want to just give the people of Somerville their Pokemon games at a reasonable price. I do think it would be nice if more people from far away could buy their Pokemon games here, but at the same time, I don't want a bunch of normies trolling around Somerville Ave with their smartphones. So what do you think about the green light extensions? Do you think that it might affect your business? I don't know how much it will affect my business, but I do think that it will be a good thing for the community. It will be progress. What kind of progress? Well, we have a lot of um, young people in the neighborhood that work in Boston and surrounding areas. It will make it easier for them to travel. They don't have to drive and pollute you know, our air a little more. So, And people who don't drive that need to get jobs that are away from the community it will help them get better paying job and again in the name of progress how can the green light extensions affect your business um, well for this business it probably won't matter too much because it's a record store and people who like records will get here but you know it's it's a good thing i think in general for the neighborhood and the people who live here you know to have the subway stop here to get on the t so it's a good thing all in all we contacted the lead developer, Jim Barnett, of US2, but they were unable to comment by the airing of this story. From VNN, I'm Rui Teixeira. I'm Anik Lomami, and back to you. To find out more, you can get involved. Contact, contact Union United at 617-776-5931. Um, order now. Sign up now, and you can get a free t-shirt. Not. Not.
Next, we have a story about a new clothing pantry here in Somerville, providing help to those who need it. Chana and Seth have the scoop. Yeah. Give me scoop. Yeah, I'm getting ice cream after this. We went to the clothing pantry at the coming school to learn more about the work they do there. Hello, I'm, I'm Seth Lomami, and I'm here with Carla Gabreda. And today we're going to be talking about the homelessness in Somerville. I am a parent liaison at the Parent Information Center and I help families when they come to register their children for the public schools. So when family come here, do they have passport or, 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 or do they just come here like immigrants? Uh, well, um, we help families that the newcomers to the country and also we have um, the whole community or the whole city of Sydney. What inspired you to uh, to start working here at the clothing pantry? Well, I think it's a great program that we have here because we have families coming from Central America, most of them, and they are new to the country and new to the weather. And um, and when they come here, they have no income, and so we help them a lot with the uh, clothing pantry. So when the people come here, do they have to learn the new language and and and, and get and, and adapt and adapt to the weather? Everything will be new. I'm personally um, I'm um, an immigrant, so when I came here, I can relate to the families that come here. Um, they need the language. They need to know everything about the culture. So it's um, big learning experience. That they have. What are some challenges you f you you face working here at the clothing pantry? Well, challenging is actually very gratifying to work there to see families coming and benefit from getting shoes and everything. So they they come here and they get overwhelmed when they see how much they can get, like they get shoes. They get um, sometimes we provide food too. So, but the clothing pantry is something very, very, very useful, and they are getting. So, so, so you're saying that when they come here and they get all all the necessary need, they they need like to live like clothes, new clothes, clean. Yes. So they even think about family, uh, extended family. They come back um, sometimes with their grandparents and so it's um yes they are like sometimes it's only one parent working and it's like a family of five so they really benefit from the so, so so what you're saying is like when one family member like lives here and they can benefit the other one in the other country by giving by getting them like money Yes, because that like um we have a family that has five children in the in the schools and um she said she's been um been saving a lot of money by um getting clothes for the children so she will have enough to provide um money for them. What would you like to say to the people who uh, who are coming to this country and who who get who are homeless? Well um we are here to help families and um, I think the clothing pantry is a big big uh, resource that we have and we offer for families so you are more than welcome to come thank you Car thank you Carla and, and, and I'm said Lumami uh, on VNN I'm Tanya Dorson, and I'm here with Marion Chu discussing homelessness in Somerville. What is your job at the clothing pantry? Well, I've been volunteering here for about a year. Um, we collect clothing, organize it, so people can come and get clothing for free. Who do you get the clothing from? We ask friends. I put out requests on Facebook to different community sites. Um, currently, we're getting more donations than we have people collecting clothes, so it's a good problem to have. What kind of people use the clothing pantry? Um, it's a big group of Somerville. Um, 
people who are just trying to make ends meet and maybe don't have enough money for clothing and rent, we like to take that burden off of them and give them clothing for free. And we also have shoes, winter gear. Um, a lot of our the people that come to the pantry are immigrants from cold weather, warm weather countries, and they're not prepared for winter weather here. So we give them winter coats, boots, sweaters, things that they need to survive New England winters. So why is your approach different than a business? Are you get donations? So well, we give everything away for free, and we encourage people to take things. Not many stores you tell people to take things without paying for them. How did you get involved in the clothing pantry? Last year, my kids were taking parkour through the rec department in this building, and I noticed that there were some clothes set on a folding table in one of the rooms. And I eventually asked Regina, who uh, works for the Parent Info Center, what that was about, and she told me that they were giving away clothes, and I thought that was a great idea. This year when school started, we um, went to the pantry and started organizing it. We noticed what donations were missing. We started collecting clothes, and it just grew from there. We bought clothing racks built some shelves to keep things better organized to make it easier to shop and it's just expanded from there. Um, how do you get more donations? Everyone wants their things to go to a good home so it's been really easy to get donations if we just say I need baby clothes or I need prom dresses. People always want to help. For VNN News, I'm Sid Luami. And I'm Tanya Dorson. Now back to you. If you would like to volunteer or learn more, contact the Parent Information Center at 617-62-GIVE-60-600. Our next story today is about the park construction in Somerville. We went on the scene to find out more about how this impact young people. Yeah, and those young people are our, uh, us, you know? We went to Lincoln Park ourselves to see how the construction was impacting residents. Um, my name is Megan Bouchard Lounsbury, and I work at the um, Somerville Family Learning Collaborative. So I work not only at the Argenziano School, which is right behind us, but I work with all of the schools in the district. And primarily, I work with the program, the school based family and community liaisons, who all work in the schools in Somerville. What do you think about the construction of the school? The construction right outside the Argenziano School is really exciting, not only because I think the playground is going to get a lot bigger for the kids at the school, and there's like 680-something kids at the school, so we need some space to move. Um, but it's also really exciting for me and my family because we live right next door to Lincoln Park. Um, and so we watch the construction every day and we see how things are developing. And I think it's going to be a great place for my kids and their friends to play and even for me and my friends to hang out in. Um, but mostly I'm really excited for the city of Somerville to have such an amazing park. In about a year, we'll have a new park for all sorts of people to hang out in and do all sorts of exciting things. Will kids have enough green space? I hope so. I think so. I think the plan is really exciting. There's going to be a lot more trees. There's going to be a lot more places to hang out. Um, there's going to be a skate park. There's going to be a dog park. There's going to be still a softball field. There's going to be a splash park with all sorts of cool like tree house kind of play equipment. Um, I think there's going to be a part that has lots of sand in it, so it's going to be good for kids of all ages, including teenagers and adults. Um, I think when the field is finished, it's going to be an awesome place to have like picnics and hang out with friends. So I think in this area of the city, there's going to be a lot of green space for people. Do you think parks need improvement? I know that when it comes to green space and open space and recreational fields, that there needs to be a lot more conversation in the city. And I think the city's trying to get that conversation going about um, where do we make or improve the fields that exist to accommodate all of the soccer programming and other kinds of programming. I know the, the high school has a lot of, you know, they have soccer teams and they have, um, frisbee teams and they have all sorts of of teams that need places to play 
and they need places to practice and they need safe places to play and practice. So I hope that in the future, places like Foss Park get improved, um, maybe Dillboy, maybe Conway, um, because there's a lot of kids who need space to play their organized sports and there's needs to be space for kids to play unorganized things as well so i think the city's working on it so i'm pretty excited will the park be available next year very important question christella yes they will um, they won't have access to the field yet here at the argenziano kids during recess and snack um, but they will have the whole play space to like the blacktop area that used to exist is gonna be newer and bigger. And there's gonna be an outside classroom, which is like, I'm so excited about that. What do you think about having less green space? I think that the city is trying to pay attention to having more green space if they can. Um, I think it's hard because we live in a city I think the city tries to pay attention to making sure that we have enough trees and um, spaces, like open spaces where community can gather and like people can meet each other. I know a lot of people in Somerville have really small yards, if they have a yard at all, so the community needs spaces to gather together outside. And I also think that it's really important for kids to have a place to play outside in nature. Um, so I don't think we will get less green space. I hope that we get more. We went to Conway Park to interview kids about green space. I'm Carol, and we're and we're gonna have Isaac. Isaac, we're gonna interview Isaac. And now comes the questions. What do you think about less green space? I uh, I think it's it's bad. Want more green space to do stuff, play. We also have Leonard here answering the questions. My first question for you is, what do you think about less green space? Um, it's bad because um, animals could lose their habitats. Which do you like best, cement or, or grass? Explain why. Grass because it's more, nat it's more nature and I like exploring. Thank you, Leonard. Hey, today we have another Isaac too, and I'm gonna ask him. I'm gonna ask him a few questions. My first question is, what do you think about less green space? Last week's space. Less green space. Oh, less green space. No, uh, nature is good. People can run around, and more time to play baseball, soccer, so people can get more fit instead of staying home and playing video games. Which do you like best? Cement or grass? Explain why. Grass, because if you trip or fall, uh, it doesn't hurt as much. What do you think about the school having construction? I think construction's good, but you don't want to take less teachers or people out of their business and add better ones, because people should stay in their jobs and not be homeless. Thank you. For Vienna News, I'm Corel Romami. I'm Christelle Romami. And, and back, back to us. us. Well, all those stories are great. It's, it's mostly ours. ours. Yeah. <laughs> right now, we, we have Lisa, Lisa B. Lisa B. Was that, that she was talking about the importance, the importance of eating healthy and having fun outside. Yeah, but kids, um, just for you to know, you don't have to eat all healthy food and stuff. You know what I mean? Seriously, donuts are still good for you. They have jelly inside it. Hi, my name is Costella. My name is Monique. And today we have a special guest, Lisa B. Tell us your name and a little bit about what you do in, here in Somerville. My name is Lisa Bucalacchio. Currently, I'm the director of the Somerville Community Health Agenda, which is part of Cambridge Health Alliance. When and why did you start doing this work? I had been doing work in the community for many years before that. So I was actually part of some of the coalitions and groups that came together. Um, to do things like the first Wellbeing of Somerville report. And we had a healthy communities team that really looked at how do we think about our community, how it's built, how what kind of policies are in the city, and what, what do we do to encourage people to, to be healthy. With so many new buildings in Somerville, what do you think will happen to a green space like the Goring? There are a lot of people who 
value green space as part of our overall community and which is one of the things that makes Somerville such a wonderful place to live that most people can get to a park within 10 minutes of their house. So I think it's just how do we um, come together around supporting, maintaining, and maybe even thinking more creatively about those parks. I also think that as developers come to the city that we really need to ask them to play their role um, in increasing how much green space we have and the quality of it. How can we make sure to take care of the plants and animals that live here too? Well, it's a really good question. On Saturday, I just oriented six new volunteers, people who just found out about the Growing Center through the web or other city communications or just walked by. And they're people who said, I'd like to help. Why do you think a lot of young people eat junk food? What can we do to change that? Well, I think that um, junk food is easily available. It's, you know, at many corner stores, parents stop to guess if a car is there when mm -hmm. they to pay. So are there ways that we can make it easy, you know, like an easy choice to be able to find alternatives? Sometimes you just need to try something. So some, how, how, what helped you choose healthy food versus instead of junk food? I don't eat junk food all the time, but I only eat it when I go somewhere. Cause like a treat. Like a special treat? Yeah. 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 My mom usually cooks like vegetables. She, she, she says eat your vegetables so you have to eat them. Yep. And do you? Yeah. yeah. What changes can we make in Somerville so that everyone has access to healthy fresh food? My friends and colleagues at Shape Up Somerville, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of that, it's part of the city's health department. Shape Up and partners with the Welcome Project and Groundwork Somerville started doing this mobile market. So it's uh, now it's a little van that's painted with fruits and vegetables on the outside, and it goes to um, the Council on Aging, so seniors in Davis Square, and then it goes to East Somerville. That's on Fridays, yeah. and on Saturdays it's at North Street Housing, and then at Mystic Housing. What do you love most about Somerville? Oh, I love the people. I love the mix of people. I love that people are excited about living here and being part of this community and that they get involved and get engaged and they ask good questions. It's, um, it's what has, um, and I think the other very special thing about Somerville is that there's a long history of people making a difference, that there's people that we elect to office, like mayors and yeah. aldermen, they make a difference because they're leading from the government side, but there's also been room for um, individuals and groups to make a difference. Back to you. Welcome back. The Somerville Mo Mo Mobile Forum and Walking will turn to Somerville this Saturday at locations across the city. Be, be sure to eat your fruits and vegetables. That's all I can say. And, and, well, that's it for today. Yeah, the news, news network. network. Tune, Tune in next time and thanks for watching. Yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. I can't go down because I'll be too short. Too short. <laughs>